Jill Westerland and I teach at Hoover High School in Hoover, Alabama, and I've taught CS principles twice. Two years ago, I taught it as a class that we came to Tuscaloosa and learned about, and then last year, I was able to teach it as a part of the national pilot and the Alabama pilot. So we followed all the um, performance tasks and all the curriculum model and all that. So what I'm going to sort of show you today, and hopefully y'all will model for yourselves an activity or an option, are some of the things that over the past two years I've been able to scurry together to have at my disposal when I needed them. Um, some of the things that you'll see in our lesson plans ask you to have a certain resource, and I have actually had to float. Are any of you going to float to a computer lab next year to teach this class? A couple of people? Okay. If you're going to float to another room, I've done that twice to two different rooms, and I learned that I needed a cabinet that I could lock to put my things in for this class, and that worked really well because I've been in two different rooms. So last summer, they just moved my cabinet to the next room that I was going to float to for the class. And so um, if that's an option for you to come up with, you know, some kind of school money or fee money to get a cabinet that locks in the room that you're going to go to to teach this, I think that would be helpful. Those of you that have your own classroom, you know, be excited. Not all of us do that. So. Um, I'm just going to go through what I have in my cabinet. Take notes on your board if you want to. The board is actually one of the resources that I bought in the spring of this year. My um, plan to use those is like this. When I need them to work on something or write something down, then we can use that as opposed to pencil and paper. And I'm not necessarily going in any order, but I am going to tell you how it pops up in lesson plans. One of the things that you'll see a lesson plan for in SNAP, and y'all may do this with Dr. Gray in the next day or two, I don't know, um, was for the students to draw a maze in SNAP and have some kind of animal, the, the cat's going to the mouse or the cat's going to find its ball of yarn. Um, that may be something that comes up on the MOOC. So I have bought or either I print for my class maze pictures that are really simple, like kindergarten because they're going to want to do this maze. So you draw that maze and snap in one class period and then try to program something to get through this maze, and that's not going to work. This maze really is probably too complicated. I would tell a student maybe to fold it in half. So when I teach that this coming school year, I'm going to use the whiteboards for them to sort of sketch their maze before they go to program it in snap or maybe work with a friend and we'll together sketch our maze. You'll see that activity in the lesson plans that we have online for doing a SNAP activity where the kids program a maze because that's an easy activity and it can grow. Um, another thing that I have, you're going to need yarn probably. So sometime, you know, if you've got an aunt or a cousin that's throwing everything away, grab some yarn. Um, there's an internet lesson plan where they um, talk about the World Wide Web, how it's different than the internet. And so you can throw the ball of yarn or multiple balls of yarn across the room and sort of form that web that's created by hyperlinks. So and we've used yarn a couple of other ways in the class, so that's another thing that you'll want to have. Um, puzzles. I got these at a kid's consignment sale. These are 24-piece puzzles that are kind of big. And you can use a puzzle like this. And I, I was excited they were 24 because I would never have a class greater than 24. But there's a lesson plan for how packets move on the internet. And so you can take a puzzle piece, let the kids put it inside an envelope, have them write on the envelope the header to the packet, and then pass them all around the room. And there's some different little parts of that lesson plan where a packet gets lost, um, you know, a packet gets intercepted. And then can you put the puzzle together when it receives its destination, much the way our emails or things that we send across the internet. So if you're, um, you know, have relatives or whatever, and a lot of this you can find at thrift stores too. So puzzles. Another variation of the puzzle idea, and my son got this the other night and I wouldn't let him open it, is this is a Lego set that only has 24 pieces. So I've heard um, at the national meeting that we had in March, one of the teachers talked about he finds either Bionicles or a Lego set that has, you know, almost the number of pieces as his class. 
and they do the same packet sending thing with the Lego pieces and then can it be assembled at the end. So that's another option. So um, I just kind of took that from him. Okay, some of the other things. There's a flow chart activity where the kids play a game and, um, and I've d I didn't teach it last year and I wish that I would have. And I did do it the first year. And we got this from somebody. I don't know, Carol and I kind of remember. Um, part of learning to program is learning to sequence. You know, what comes first, what happens next, what happens next. And playing a simple game is a good way for kids to sort of learn how to think through that sequence, but then also how to put it on paper with the proper shapes of a flowchart. So these are some of the games that I have. Um, if you're really like, you know, from the 70s, you might remember Raphael, I love this game. I actually use this in um, APCS too. But um, Clue, Sorry, I've got many versions of Sorry. I don't know what else I brought. Um, Shoots and Ladders. I probably wouldn't do Candyland because it's so simple. You need it to move, although I think you can slide back in Candyland. Um, I also have at school the game Aggravation. I've got several Sorry. So there's a lesson plan that you'll have available. I guess y'all are going to get all those links later in the week. But all of our lesson plans are in some folders for y'all. So this one will be under programming and flowcharting. I would probably have the kids divide into teams, you know, who they want. And this really helps build a spirit of collaboration in your class because they don't all, they're not going to, be able to play games with just their one friend. They're going to need to find, you know, two or three more friends to play sorry with. And I, let, I explain what I need my kids to do. I need you to flowchart. I talk about what a flowchart looks like, what the shapes look like, and then we play a game for a couple of days. And I would probably have them use the whiteboards to sort of figure out how their flow charts ought to look. And then what I did is I had everybody make their own flow chart. Even though as a group, they sort of put together the plan, everybody had to go to the computer and do his or her own flow chart. And I did teach flow charts last year, but not with the gaming. And we have an iPad one-to-one -one in our school, so we were able to get an iPad app for flow charting, and so they made them that way and then just gave me that electronic file on Edmodo. So, games, and I think um, if y'all know about this a month now into school, some of these things you might can gather up. Um, egg carton parts, when you talk about arrays or lists or sorting, um, I mean, this you can bring anytime. This wouldn't be hard to get, but another idea that kind of is better than this idea would be those medicine boxes like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or I guess Sunday to Saturday that, you know, elderly people might use, or I think my mom, I don't consider her elderly, but she has one of those. So, um, and you may see those at the thrift store or garage sale or somewhere. Um, another option, too, would be the craft boxes that have all the different little squares. That actually forms an array of arrays or a matrix. So if you go to that level, you know, grab one of those if you see one of those. Um, tablets. I was able to get a grant through a local um, school foundation, and so I bought Nexus, and, and y'all will have some money to spend too for this class, but I bought Nexus 7 tablets, and then um, these little cases. I was able to find the cases on Amazon, so I was able to get one in every different color so that they would know which one was theirs. And I have 10 tablets. Um, these are best used for App Inventor, but they also are really good for the video. Um, when we have to make videos for turning in the different performance tasks that they'll do during the year, we got our best video by putting an iPad or a tablet on a tripod and video in their screen that way. You can do screen matic and y'all hear about other options, but. Um, it's another video. This is not something y'all necessarily need because I don't know that we're going with App Inventor, but, you know, if you have some, I'll do that. Um, okay, this, this is an Xbox controller, and I just kind of went through my, closet, my cabinet and sort of went down what I have. Um, there's a programming language or programming activity called Kodu, K-O-D-U, and it would definitely be supplemental. It's not going to be a part of the lesson plan agenda that we give you. But I had some kids in my class last year that were not to the level of being ready to program in 
almost snap, but definitely they wouldn't have been able to do Python. Code is really for middle school kids, and you program with the Xbox controller. It's a free product from Microsoft, and you actually then play with the Xbox controller. So I bought a class set of these with some local grant money, and I'm actually going to share them this coming year with our local middle school. So have those. Um, and if I have a really um, lower student who can't handle SNAP, they're not ready for that yet, I would put them on Kodu for sure. And these are like $9.99 if you buy them on Amazon or $29.99 if you want a real techie one. Okay, um, these are very popular. And I would definitely tell you before school starts, before October, get you some potato heads. And I wouldn't go buy potato heads because you're not going to get all the cool parts. Um, I hit the thrift store one day and found a bag of Disney potato heads. There's no telling what they spent at, you know, downtown Disney buying all of the ones that I got. And then since then, I've looked on eBay and I've um, gone to a kid's consignment sale and found them. Here's what I would tell you to do with Snap and with the potato heads. This potato could be a character in your SNAP program. If he were to come to life, what would he be able to do? Who's a Star Trek person? Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars. Sorry. <laughs> Star Wars. So he would be able to walk. He would be able to speak. He would be able to laser us with his arm. So in SNAP, those would be motions that he could make. And they would be looks that he could have. That would be the language of SNAP to say what this guy could do. Um, in Python or Java, he would be a class. And what he could do would be his methods. And what he looks like would be his attributes. So the kids love this because you can just pour all the Lego parts on the table and let them all build a character and then talk about if my guy came to life, this is what he could do. And like this person can't touch anything because he has bunny ears and regular ears, you know? So everybody could be different. So um, the kids would love this. Um, I used it last year in my AP class to teach inheritance and um, everybody made a class and, a, and then made a subclass and. So it was really cool. So this has applications in both classes as well. Um, and y'all heard of these, I know. If you have a way to get money to, especially if you're a career tech teacher, you can probably use Perkins money for a lot of this that I'm talking about. If you're not, um, you know, I don't know what kind of money y'all can get to, but do what you can. Um, if you have a way to get some Lego sets, this is not a part of the curriculum either that, you know, we're going to give you. But... It's a great thing when everybody's exhausted and we just need to do something fun for two days. You know, we just got three weeks of Thanksgiving week and, you know, I didn't have to have those three days. Um, usually the Lego NXTs come with some programming software and it lets them make a loop and watch it loop. And some kids need to see this little guy making a square because you did one right turn and you looped it three times. So um, if you can get a set of Lego NXTs or the new ones, EVS, EV3s, then do that. If you can't, it's no big deal, but it's another tool that you can have in your cabinet. I also bought a parrot flying drone thing from Brookstone, it was $99. And I, we did a lab where um, somebody drove the drone with their iPad or their phone, because there's an app for that. And when it hovered over the Lego guy, he scooted out of the way. And they kind of play hide and seek. So you can work this in if you have that as a tool. And then last but not least, almost, um, I was in somewhere, New York, Christmas time on a DECA trip. And found a street fair, and these are Russian nesting dolls. Um, these are really good to talk about nesting in programming, and they also can be used, um, so they go all the way down to five. So, And there are some kids' toys. I think, Carol, you've got something a little bit different. So there are some kids' toys that do the same thing as this, but, you know, like I say, if you're at a garage sale, pick that up. And then the last thing that I bought 
was raspberry pie. This is what they look like. And they're about $60 on Amazon. Um, it's just this little bitty box, little bitty processor. And it actually can process, you can code with these, I think, in Python and in a couple of other things. So that was it. I had two kids, um, I bought three of these. I had two students choose to do this. They were advanced. Um, they had been in our IT Academy at Hoover and um, then took my principal's class. So, I mean, this wouldn't be your beginner kid, but they chose to use these for their create performance task. If you buy a Raspberry Pi, you will need to purchase this HDMI cable thing right here to go with it. I didn't know that, but we got those in pretty quick. So that's another tool that you can have. Um, that's about it that I have in my cabinet. Um, I think that I have. So between now and school starting, if you um, see any of this somewhere, puzzles, you know, potato heads, whatever, you'll hear us talk about these on the Hangouts next year, or you might see some of these things in the lesson plans and think, well, if I'd have known I needed a Clue Game or a Sorry Game, I would have gotten one. We just cleaned out the closet. So um, FYI. Now here's what I want you to do with your whiteboard. If you wrote on it to take the notes while I was talking, Take your phone out and take a picture of your whiteboard. And then you've got the notes that you just took. And you don't have to keep up with a sheet of paper. If you didn't write on your whiteboard, no big deal. But that's how I would use it in my class, is here's this to use, and now take your notes and turn them into your cell phone or your iPad, and you've got your notes. So um, that would be a way. Y'all y'all wrote on them. Y'all just sitting here. That's okay. Um, that's fine. I don't have to play them off. But... Um, but that's how I use that in class in lots of different ways. So, um, anyway, that's the cabinet that you can help create. That's right, Scotty's old school. Uh, I'm old school too. So, um, anyway, so that's my closet. And, um, you know, if you float, don't worry about it because you can take your closet to whatever room you end up being in. And if you have your own room, just, you know, start accumulating. And it'll take you a year or two, and then you'll have some things to pull out as well. That's it. Thank you.